Hi and welcome to day three. It's uh, the third day of the week, so we're going to be talking about production. Again, we're covering the absolute fundamentals. Some of you may know some of this stuff. For others, it may be completely new. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. What is production? When we talk about production, we're talking about the process of creating web pages. It's the way that you build web pages so that they work. When you do production well, you make web, web pages that work better and that are easier to work with. A shoddy production that doesn't follow good practice can seem quicker, maybe in the short term, but creates more problems for you in the long term. I've been building web pages by hand for over 15 years and um, I will only follow best practice now because I've learnt through having to spend hours going over and over things to uh, to apply certain changes that it's just not worth worth the uh, the effort of, of taking shortcuts. In actual fact it's much much better than just to start by following best practice from day one so I'm going to explain to you the practice that we follow. I'm going to all the code that I that I'm going to show you, the HTML and stuff, it's all going to be in its raw form. I code by hand all the time, pretty much. Um, there are visual editors out there. Dreamweaver is generally acknowledged to be the best and most powerful. Uh, it's not what I use myself. Um, I've always coded by hand, but also um, I can type pretty fast as well, so that makes life easier. I do recommend anyone who wants to really make a career in web design or a career in pretty much anything these days, take the time to teach yourself to type. If you go onto web design from scratch and type in um, learn to type in the uh, in the search box there, I've written an article that explains why. Um, you'll You'll slow down initially for a couple of months, but then after that point you will get quicker and quicker and quicker. So much of what we do these days is on a keyboard. If you if you can type without having to look at the keyboard, then it make, can make everything that you do with a computer quicker. So there's just a little bit of advice there. Okay, so um, why am I going to show you how to code stuff by hand when there are tools that will do it for you? The reason is that I really want you to understand what's going on behind the scenes because if you if you don't understand HTML, if you don't understand CSS and maybe JavaScript, then it's going to limit you to to what you're going to be able to do in web design. So you may be able to make your own pages using something like Dreamweaver, but you won't necessarily be able to fix problems. You won't necessarily be able to make them work in all the browsers you want them to work in. And when you want to integrate something else from somewhere else, you know, even Google Analytics or Website Optimizer or Amazon Affiliate Links, all kinds of things will give you HTML code. So you really, really need to, to understand how this stuff works. Can you be a web designer without knowing this stuff? Yes, but you will be severely limited in the scope of what you can do. So I'm going to take you the long way around. I'm going to show you how to code by hand and how to do everything properly. doesn't mean you have to do it all the time, but at least I'll have shown you what's possible. Okay, so within a web page, there are three kinds of things that we're going to be learning. The first one, really important, is HTML. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And HTML gives a page its structure and also its content. Things like an image is represented by an HTML tag and the structure of a page. You've got blocks and columns and tables and paragraphs and things like that. They've all got their own tags. So um, it's the HTML tags that tell a page this is this kind of content and that is another kind of content. And I'm going to teach you all the HTML tags you need to know over the coming months. The next thing is CSS, and that stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is a very clever way that um, web pages get their style, get their, their visual look. Now it's possible, it's always been possible, to build some stylistic 
features into your markup, your HTML markup. Remember, it stands for hypertext markup language, so sometimes I'll use the word markup. But it's a really, really bad idea. And I'll explain why. Um, one thing is that you can have a whole website, and every page says, use the styles from this style sheet file, a CSS file. And then if you make a change in that CSS file, then every, web, every page on your entire site will inherit that change immediately. Um, and that can save you an awful lot of work. Now, if every single paragraph on every single page says paragraph background color equals pink, and you suddenly don't want background color to be pink anymore, then you would have to go through and remove every reference to pink in every single page, and you don't want to have to do that. So CSS is brilliant. Um, I'll take you through, I'll teach you step by step how it works, how to make it do everything you want it to do, and um, I'll make it as easy as possible. The final element is JavaScript, and that's um, that's actual code. It is really code. We're going to touch on JavaScript, but it's not critical for a designer to know. But I do want you to be able to appreciate how it works and what's possible with it, because I believe that a professional designer should know about that much. Okay. So the only really, really important thing that I want you to take out of today is that we keep our HTML separate from our CSS, separate from our JavaScript. You can write all of this stuff together in a big lump, but it's a very bad idea to do it, and there are some good reasons. The first reason is it minimizes repetition. Your HTML is HTML, and um, every page has got its markup which says this is what's on the page and this is the structure of the page. But like I mentioned before, if you want to apply the same styles in more than one place, then the way to do that is not to have it in your page, just to have it applied to your page in a similar way to you might have several presentations that use the same template, although it doesn't work in exactly the same way. And the same goes for JavaScript, the code that can give a page its interactivity. You don't want to, um, to have to have the same code repeated more than once. Apart from anything else, guys, it takes more work. And you get no prizes for doing more work. It's easier to manage. When you know that all your markup is in your HTML and all your CSS is in your CSS files and all your JavaScript is in your JavaScript files, it's a lot easier to find what you want to change. It's a lot easier to know where to go um, if you want to add something or remove something. So it makes life easier for you. And if you want to change the way your website looks, then, for example, you can do that by swapping the CSS file. So there are, there are things like um, WordPress sites that have got different themes. There's, there's lots of different website building environments that can apply different themes. So one thing you can do is just say, I'm not going to use this CSS file, I'm going to use a different one. And you can apply changes to your entire site, site-wide, in one go. But you can also apply changes for different contexts, which is only possible when your style and your script are separated from your content. I want, just want to tell you quickly about user agents. Basically, your web browser is a particular kind of user agent. That's basically an interface that you use to view a web page. But that a web browser isn't the only way that people view web pages. Search engine spiders, the things that come along and discover your website, they're a different type of user agent and they interact with your page in a different way. But there's other ways that people out there are accessing your web pages too. Not only are there lots of different browsers, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, etc., but there are browsers for a lot of different devices, like um, smartphones, for example. iPad might have a slightly different browser to the regular desktop Safari browser. And there are still more obscure ones. There are user agents which will convert the content of your web page into spoken voice for use by people who've got visual impairment or are blind. So there are specific user agents where you can they let people browse the web, browse links, read what's going on without being able to see. And they're different user agents. Now, 
you can apply different styles for different specific user agents if you if you want to do that so you could have your web page look one way for people who are browsing on a computer and you can have it look another way for people who are browsing on an iPhone and that's relatively easy to do it's a lot more advanced I don't want you to freak out we're not going to be doing that for a long time but I do want you to understand why it's important to separate your HTML from your CSS and from your JavaScript and I hope that's clear Thank <music> you.